life, love, and pop pop culture. Hi guys, my name is Danielle Delgado. I'm Becky G. Alex Neustadter. And you guys are watching Life, Love, and Pop Culture. Axel kind of becomes your guys' like best friend throughout the movie. And I want to know what qualities you guys look for in a best friend. That's a good question. Mm. I'd say trust is a big one for me. Um, humility is a big one. And someone who just likes to have a good time and doesn't take themselves too seriously. Yeah, yeah. I would say the same thing. Someone who's like really loving and accepting too. So you're saying that we're going to be best friends. Yeah, <laughs> for life. Yeah. After this, we're going to hang your character. I feel like everybody's kind of like rooting against him. I feel like you kind of have to prove yourself. Would you say that's like accurate, right? I think it's a really good representation. Yeah. yeah. Underdog for sure. For sure, right? So is there a moment in your life where you felt like you had to prove yourself? Uh, I feel like when I was growing up, I was always smaller than everybody and shorter than everybody. Um, and I played like sports kind of a year ahead sometimes. So mm -hmm. I, I was like always the smallest one. So I think that just automatically sometimes puts you um, as an underdog and, you know, I kind of had to carry a chip on my shoulder and work harder just to be as good or better. So that was the time I, I guess I had to prove myself. And your character kind of goes through a lot of hardship sure. and kind of had to struggle with your mother. What obstacle would you say that you faced in your life and how did you kind of overcome it? I think one of the biggest things that I always like reflect on was uh, when I was nine years old, uh, and before I had ever really thought about really pursuing being in this industry, uh, my family, we lost our home and we lived in my grandparents' converted garage. It was all six of us, my parents, me being the eldest and my three younger siblings. And it was such a, a interesting time because I was mature enough to understand what was going on, but too young to actually do something about it. Mm -hmm. That was really frustrating. I couldn't go get a nine to five job or bag groceries at a grocery store. Mm -hmm. uh, all I could do was go to school and I wasn't good at school. So I felt, you know, helpless. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm really good at making people laugh. I'm kind of good at singing. Maybe, you know, I could like learn what a monologue is and like do auditions or something. Mm -hmm. And it was really just out of that necessity to just feel like I was contributing to bringing something to the table to help my family, but also like uh, an escape, a yeah. sense of therapy, you know, to, mm -hmm. to make people laugh and smile. And it definitely paid off because now we're here. <laughs> it's an amazing story that just like goes to show you that you can like do anything you put your mind definitely. to. Really quick before I let you guys go, you guys kind of left a little cliffhanger. Is there a sequel coming soon? I mean... We'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah. We'll see. Well, That's the whole point, right? It's yeah. Like, well, thank you guys so much for joining me, and thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to tune in next time as we discuss more life, love, and pop culture. Life, love, and pop pop culture. If you enjoyed my interview, subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to look out for new videos every Wednesday.